So let's get into how this works and RFID technology basics. What you see here on the screen is a passive RFID tag. What makes it passive is the fact that it doesn't require a battery source for the chip in the tag in which to uh, be interrogated, meaning read by another reader using radio frequency signals. That's intentional with the investment that A2B Tracking has made in this technology because we wanted this to be a permanent, very maintenance-free solution. And if you introduce batteries into an active tag solution, which is required, you have a replacement factor over time. And oftentimes our customers are dealing with thousands and thousands of assets. To so to try and engage in replacing batteries with that kind of technology would be very maintenance heavy and cumbersome. We also think that passive provides the best return for your investment because these tags can get read from significant distances while maintaining uh, the life of the integrity over the life of the asset as long as it lives. But let's now talk about not only the tag, but also how these tags apply to assets. The first thing you ought to know about an RFID tag is that there are really two significant identifiers that are part of this tag. The standard-based EPC code, which is an encoding uh, that will allow the RFID, t RFID tag to be read by virtually any reader or interrogator with a standardized-based approach. Now that will link to a tag ID like you see illustrated in the area I have encircled here. And that tag ID often represents the unique item that you have within your database. So now we can start linking RFID tags to what exists today in your property system or your asset management system or inventory control. The second part of this is to talk about how tags mount specifically on the variety of assets or containers that you may be interested in tracking. So for instance, if we start in the, at the very top, we can see the green arrow pointing to the very basic surface of a laptop. Applying a tag to a laptop um, certainly uh, takes some surface prep in order to apply the adhesive. It's really just a peel and stick methodology. But what you need to be sure of is that you're selecting the right tag for that particular asset. We have lots of customers who do on metal kind of tagging where you need a specific tag to be applied to a very specific um, surface type. And these on metal tags are designed to leverage the properties of that kind of metal surface in order to get the best read range. You also may be interested in tagging the container. Could be something like a Pelican case or even just a corrugated box. And there are specific tags that would allow you to get the best read performance when tagging those kinds of assets or containers. Now, this is really just scratching the surface. I'll give you a few more examples of different asset tag types as we go down the line here. 